Hey guys, it's Core Ross and welcome to Six News. Today we've got the patch notes for Brutal Swarm, the new season of Rainbow Six Siege, and we've got a lot in here. So first of all, there is the entire rework of the PC recoil. We're also getting a lot of changes for console recoil as well, which is very good, and some of it is actually improving guns. So we're going to talk about everything in here. So we'll start with the balance graph. We've got the attackers and uh, Finca up here just taking off with of course the lmg meta they call it and she's also got frags and stuff as well and a pretty good gadget so she's absolutely destroying blackbeard doing terrible monty here with an incredible win rate but actually getting picked almost nothing so interesting to see him absolutely skyrocket up Callie as well is interestingly high, but when with such low pick rates, it doesn't really matter at this point because they can have a really high win rate, but if they're not getting picked much, it means they're probably situational for certain objectives and certain kind of rounds. And I would say overall, it's not looking too good for the attackers. Usually we'd have a lot more kind of in the central area, but they're really starting to spread out. And unfortunately, they're, and they're starting to clump up down here, which is the underpicked and too weak category. So a lot of them not doing well. And look at Sens, you know, just a brand new operator. It was, it was good for a long time. They were bringing in new operators who would land kind of in this area. And they would do like really well balance wise. And Sens is really coming low. It's a real pay. So I'm hoping Sens at some point will be able to get pushed up here. Maybe with a recoil rework, Sens' gun will get a lot better. But we'll have to wait and see. And other than Finca, I think the rest of the ops really aren't too bad. Yana could have a lower pick rate, but it's probably not crazy bad at this moment in time. And the nice balanced operators in the middle are doing pretty good. Let's move on to defenders. And just to make it clear as well, these graphs are ranked PC, platinum and above. And this is for us to digest. It's not used for actual balancing. They use all the data from all the ranks and everything to actually balance the game. This is weird. What has happened here? Why is Clash here with the most insane win rate we've ever seen? What the hell? She's hardly getting picked much, of course. But what is going on? What has happened that suddenly Clash is winning this many rounds with the people that are picking her? She used to be, remember, she used to actually cause the defenders to lose. She was more useful to the attackers than defenders. She used to be down here. What has happened? That is crazy. Now, usually when we see an operator go that mental in one direction, it's usually down to an actual cheat that's been going on for like part of the season. And I don't think there's been anything specific I've noticed with Clash. That is just weird. But for the rest of this graph, it's actually really good. This is the first time I think I've ever seen the defender's graph look better than the attacker's. Because this is incredibly good gripping. And to bring Chanka up, to bring Castle up, usually we have a bunch of operators down here. They are all looking relatively well. That is impressive with a huge clump right in the middle for balanced. I'm actually seriously impressed with this defender's graph. Like there's nothing out of the ordinary. Even Alibi up here, that's not crazy bad or anything. That is impressive. So I, I, my takeaway is Clash, something weird has happened there, but the rest is looking incredibly good. And let's move on to the bands. So we've got Thatcher, Jackal, No Ban, and then Finca. Nothing really unusual here at all. Mira, Valkyrie, Kaid, No Ban, then Clash. That's the other thing about that Clash weirdness is this is Platinum and above. So it's people who are good at fighting Clash. So her win rate just makes no sense to me. Anyway, let's move on to the balance and we've got a ton of stuff to cover here. So we've got weapon recoil balancing. Now this is for PC only. No console changes here. So you're going to see an increase in recoil on assault rifles, SMGs, LMGs, and machine pistols. Now, this is mostly when you're holding down the button. If you're burst firing, you're not actually going to see a crazy amount of recoil. It is if you're holding it down and doing like long pre-fires and stuff. But there's also weapons that are getting better as well. And it's just going to have to be that you sit down and play with these new recoils to figure out. And of course, the test hour is coming up. So I'd recommend jumping in and trying it because... I can't give you a good understanding of how it's going to play out. So we'll see how this plays, but I, so far people seem to be relatively positive, but we'll see. And I was very worried that they were going to leave console behind with this whole rework to the PC recoil, but not mentioning console at all, but they are actually doing it. So right now what's happening is PC and console recoil is being disconnected. 
Controller recoil is 50% of PC recoil right now, but now they're gonna be disconnecting it and balancing it completely separately. So what we've got here is a softening of these weapon recoils, so an improvement to the recoil, so it'll be easier to control. So Zofia's assault rifle, the R4C, the MX4, and the Scorpion. So you'll see these weapons get better in the new season. Gonna be interesting to try them all out. And then we've got an increase in recoil for these weapons. I'm surprised to actually see the spear in here it is great gun, but uh, they're obviously trying to hit Finca everywhere it hurts for her. So her spear is getting worse. But you can see the LMGE here is getting worse and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, I'm glad to see that we're not being left behind on the console. The controllers are getting uh, some actual buffs with recoil. So that's brilliant. We've also got changes to the attachments as well. They're gonna be more impactful in the game. With the new recoil, you're gonna notice that different things are really gonna make an impact. So there's a lot happening. They're also opening up the availability of all these attachments to different weapons that previously didn't allow them. So you'll see the comments that are showing up on these guns, for instance, that normally don't have them. You've also got the flash hider showing up on different guns that again, normally didn't have them. So this is gonna give you just much more options on what you put on your gun so you can really customize them to however you wanna play. But to me, even though all this is great and it'll take a long time to digest it all and see how things work and what the best combos will be and stuff like that, this is the one I am excited about. Removing damage reduction from suppressors. Because right now, suppressors don't improve your recoil and they reduce your damage from your gun significantly. And the only positive is they, they remove the threat indicators from when bullets are flying past an enemy's head. So they don't know which direction it's coming from. That is the only positive suppressors give right now. So this is significant, absolutely brilliant. So there's still a trade-off for using a suppressor because of course, doesn't help your recoil like another attachment would, but you're not gonna be losing that damage. So absolutely brilliant. I am gonna make a poll about this change because I do wonder if this is a 50-50 split with a player base where some people are scared of it and some people are hyped for it. I'm really curious to see how that's gonna play out. But yeah, absolutely amazing. You can also see the extended barrel here is gonna show up on a whole bunch of different guns. I don't like the extended barrel at all. I don't think it's any use, but it'll be on a lot more weapons. You've got the angle grip. Now the content creators I was playing with, a lot of them said this was faster now. I don't know if it is or is not with a test server. You can never be entirely sure unless you actually you know, kind of test it side by side. But you can see that a lot of people will be getting the angle grip on their guns. So you're gonna have a lot more options there. And yeah, nothing really bad to say about that at all. You're also getting the later sight on guns that normally didn't have it. So like Glazzy's sniper rifle and stuff like that. It's gonna be interesting to have them, but I don't think it'll make much difference. But it's again, it's a nice thing to have it to be able to customize your weapon exactly how you want. And then we're moving on to what I think is the more impactful stuff, weapon sights. So roughly most people on attack will now have a 1.5 sight on their gun, but on defense, it'll be quite rare. So 1.5 to me is one of the best sites in the game and a lot of people are gonna be getting it. So let's have a little run through of what we got here. So Alibi's ACS12 getting a 1.5. Amaru getting a 1.5 on the G8A1. Docky B's Bosch G getting a 1.5 and a 2.0. Fusey's 6P41 getting a 2.0. Finger's Spear getting a 1.5. Gridlock's F90 getting a 1.5. Goyu's TCSG getting a 1.5. That is like that is probably a go-to for me. Hibana's getting a 2.0. IQ's AUG is getting a 1.5 and 2. Jackal's getting a, a 1.5 on his assault rifle. Kaid's, uh, again, this is another great one. Kaid's TCSG shotgun getting 1.5. Lion's amazing gun getting a 1.5. Maestro's ACS12 getting a 1.5. We've got Nomad getting a 2.0, Osa getting a 1.5, Rook getting a 1.5 on his MP5, which is very good. Considering he's getting that mid-season update later this season where he's gonna be able to you know, revive everyone on his team, that's an incredible little buff alongside getting a 1.5 as well. Thermite getting a 1.5 on his assault rifle, Thatcher getting a 2.0 on his assault rifle, and on his LA5A2, he's getting a 1.5. And then Vigil's getting the 1.5 and 2.0 on the Boss G. Now, a lot of leaks said that Vigil was getting the 1.5 on his assault rifle, but that is not the case. As far as I know, that is not happening. 
And Zofia, she's getting 1.5 on her assault rifle. But we're not done down here. You can see that Goyu is getting 1.5 on his SMG. Incredible. I think that might be a bit OP. But looking at his pick rate in the actual graphs, maybe it's okay. Maybe he can get a good weapon. We've got Aces AK losing the 2.0 by getting that 1.5. Yana losing the 1.5 on ARX. Mute is losing his 1.5 on the MP5K. Nomad is losing the 2.5 but getting the 1.5 on the RX. Sledge is losing the 2.5 on his L85A2. Kaid is losing the 1.5. That is a significant nerf to him, big time. And uh, they're obviously going after his very good, very, like, very, very good gadget these days. Then we've got Finca, which is losing the 2.5, getting a 2.0 on the 6P41. We've got Zofia's LMG losing 2.5 and not getting anything else. We've got Wamai's MP5 losing the 1.5, so that's significant. We've got Capital getting 2.0. Blackbeard getting a 2.0 on his MK17. Yana's G36 gaining the 1.5. Frost C1 gaining the 1.5, so that's very cool. And Pulse is gaining the 1.5. So, yeah, that is like, there's, there's a lot to, <laughs> there's a lot to process here. But, um, yeah, the, the 1.5 is basically going to be one of the, probably most picked sites after this season goes live that's my guess because it's such a good thing and it's just appearing on so many operators so we'll see how that uh, plays out then we got the emp impact grenade i've got a dedicated video on this and i'll also be myth busting it to make sure we know everything about it later but yeah it's going to show up on blackbeard monty docker b nuke gridlock sledge line and osa as a third secondary option they are not losing anything to gain it so that is very good and what's interesting here is they say 1.8 meters for the explosion radius. They said 2 meters in the presentation, so I wonder if they've actually tweaked that. And then it lasts for 9 seconds in total. Then we got frag grenade. This is another huge change. So reducing overall range to 3.6 meters and changing the damage curve as well. So here we have got the frag grenade damage graph. So what we've got here is damage on the left and we've got distance on the bottom. Old is blue, new is orange. So what would previously happen is with the blue line, we would get full damage up to here, which is over 100, well, about 150. And that would be up to like around about, you know, just what, 2.5. That would be lethal damage no matter what right here. And then it would go down and would then kind of come out and it would do damage all the way up to five meters. Now, the more significant thing for me is this damage here doesn't really mean anything to a player. It's not a huge amount. However, gadgets in this range would get destroyed from here to here, that 3.5 to five gadgets would get destroyed here. So that's huge, I think, because this means that gadgets that would normally get destroyed are now gonna be fine in that radius. So that's a significant buff just to defenders overall for the gadgets being able to survive a frag grenade now. But also, of course, with this new one, you're going to do less damage. So at just over two meters, you're looking at a definite insta-kill on a player. But it drops down quickly. You can see it going past 100 health here at around about 2.5 meters. And then it drops significantly down, going to 3.5, where it'll then do no damage after that. So a huge, huge nerf to frag grenades. And uh, we'll just have to play the new season and what, see what we think. I usually, I think, get my grenades within this range, so I'm probably not going to see much of a difference. But for players throwing it, say, underneath and up to the ceiling, it's going to do a lot less damage because you're going through the entire ceiling's range, which is a good meter by itself. So it should make a big difference to a lot of plays with frag grenades. We've also got a change to hard breach charge. Now, remember, when this came out, a lot of people said it was OP and that it would basically replace hard breach operators and it hasn't and it's getting another buff i think this is like the third buff it's had since it was released so it's got a reduced activation time it was five seconds it is now going down to four and this is to help with the new emp impact grenade which only disables stuff for nine seconds a lot less than thatcher so they want to make it so that you can actually use it in that time because it takes two seconds to deploy and then of course the five seconds to actually go off and the electrics could be back on by the time you are done. And then we've got some surprise operator balancing. So fuse here, reduced drill time from three seconds to two seconds. So that's going through a reinforced surface. It'll now get through quicker. 
So that's really good for Fuse. We've got increased pellet trail visibility. This is good for defenders. So you can see the actual frags coming in and you can potentially get out of the way before they go off. They've also added smoke grenades as a third option to his secondary gadget loadout. So yeah, pretty sweet. Callie is getting a nice buff here. So she's gonna get an extra shot off her lance, which is now going from three to four. So that's brilliant. They've also improved her sniper rifle in a few different ways with in with better recoil and your visibility will also be better when you are shooting. So that's all good. Glass is getting a claymore added to his secondary gadget loadout. That's over everything he already has. He's not losing anything to get it. We're getting an addition to Capital. He's getting the gun six. Yana is losing the gun six. Finca is losing the frag grenades and she's going to get smokes. And then this one I think is going to piss off a lot of people. Maverick is losing his frag grenades. Of course, that's basically part of his main kind of tactics these days is burning a hole, throwing a frag in. He is losing those frag grenades. So he's going to need a teammate to bring the frag grenades along and he's going to get stuns instead. And then Buck is getting the gone six. So what we've got here is a lot to digest, like an absolute ton of changes. This really is the season of balancing as they put it on their reveal. And it's going to be a major impact to the season for PC and console. The recoil changes and overall changes to operators is going to be changing. I would think a lot of metas and ways people play. So I always love that and I love the variation and then adapting to it once the season's out. So I can't wait to try this on the test server and play around with all of this. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.